स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया so then another problem that i want to describe in this lecture is is the problem is the problem of of geodesics okay so this is a problem which is widespread in the area of differential geometry right so the problem is as follows let us assume let us assume that sigma is some surface it could be a surface of a sphere it could be a surface any particular surface and let us say that let us say that p0 and p1 now for easier reference let us say this is my this is my surface denoted by sigma and let p0 and p1 be two points on this surface okay be two points on this surface sigma the geodesic problem the geodesic problem says we need to figure out the we need to figure out the optimal curve we need to figure out the optimal curve sigma with minimum arc length okay so we have to figure out the curve between passing between the two points p0 and p1 so that the total length of the curve is minimum now intuitively we can see that the length will be minimum when this curve let's say on a two dimensional surface this curve is a straight line right but we will show using calculus of variations that indeed that the extremal solution that we get from the geodesic problem is indeed a straight line okay so a, a bit more uh, uh, in in depth detail of this problem let us say we denote sigma we denote sigma by the position vector r from small sigma to r cube where where in terms of notation my small sigma is is a non empty non empty connected open set non empty connected open set okay uh, set or or i would say a subset of of r2 so sigma is a subset over the class of all these surfaces which is the subset of r2 okay and then so i i i describe any of my surface by a two parameter family let's say u and v so let us say u and v belongs to sigma which is the class of this surface and in that case my 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 family of curves on this surface is is described by r which will be a function of u comma v which is going to be in terms of its position vectors x of u comma v y of u comma v z of u comma v okay so so it turn, turns out that the set of i can further simplify this description of these optimal curve using a single parameter let us say t so let us say the set of all smooth curves when i say smooth i denote continuous slash piece wise differentiable curves so set of smooth set of smooth curves on sigma we denote it 
using the parameter t such that t is taken from some interval along the real axis t 0 to t 1. So, in that case the set of all smooth curves which is going to be which is going to lie on this on this surface we denote it by capital R of t which is eventually going to be R of u of t comma v of t. Right? So, we see that the curves will be found by substituting particular values of u and v in this position vector and as we move along these curves as we move along this curve the value of the value of this parameter t it changes okay, from t 0 to t 1. Okay. So, in this case my my arc length my arc length let us say arc length element d s square is going to be by chain rule it is going to be r prime t let us say the absolute value because this is the length. So, length can never be negative. So, arc length square is absolute value square uh, well uh, absolute value square times times d t square. Okay. So, then when we open up we open up this absolute value that is this is r prime t dot with r prime t d t square we can we can rewrite we can rewrite this arc length element as follows as follows that this is also equal to r of u times u prime plus r u dot r v times uh, times times uh, u prime v prime and that is twice plus plus uh, r v r v times v prime square okay times uh, well there is no square involved here times d t square where where my r u r u is del r partial derivatives of r with respect to u and my r v is partial derivative of r with respect to v. So, further I denote I denote my r u or absolute value of well uh, so r u it turns out to be r u square r u r v times uh, and then r v square. So, that is the correct expression in this case. So, it turned out let us for simplicity denote e to be the absolute value of r u square and f to be r u dot product with r v and my expression r v mod r v square to be g. So, the geodesic problem says that the g the geodesic problem says that we want to minimize we want to minimize l which is the integral of the square root of the arc length okay so the integral of the square root of the arc length square which we substitute from this following expression above which is also equal to integral from t0 to t1 times square root of e times u prime square plus 2 f times u prime dot with v prime plus g times v prime square d t. Okay. Subject to subject to u of t 0 is u 0, u of t 1 is u 1 and v of t 0 is v 0 and v of t 1 is v 1. Okay. So, these are my boundary conditions in terms of the parameters of the system. So, so just to give a brief overview let us say we say let us say we are considering the surface as the sphere. So, on a sphere 
I can denote my my surface R of u comma v by the following by the following set of functions. My coordinates are sin u uh, sin u uh, cos v comma that is my x coordinate times sorry sin v sorry sin sin u times sin v and finally, the z coordinate is cos u okay. and then if we are to use this formula above, we are to use this formula above, we see that my arc length l turns out to be by substituting all these values for this uh, x, y and z, my arc length functional comes out to be u prime square plus v prime square sin of sin square u dt, where my primes denote the derivatives of these parameters u and v with respect to the parameter t. Okay, and so, that is that is a particular case. Moving on, moving on let us look at a, a related problem. Let us look at a related problem that is to find the minimal the minimal surface the minimal surface similar to the catenoid problem i can i can refer this problem as the generalized the generalized catenoid problem that i showed earlier okay so in this case the problem says we have to find Again, this is the geodesic problem, but in two independent variables. The problem says we have to find the surface, we have to find the surface having having minimal minimal area among all smooth among all smooth simply connected. among all smooth simply connected surface with a given boundary with a given boundary gamma such that my area element in this case is going to be similar to the arc length construction. My area element construction will be square root of 1 plus z x where this is the derivative of z with respect to x plus z y square d x d y right where where my my z is the height the height of the surface and x and y are my my independent variables okay so in this case my area functional a of z turns out to be a double integral double integral over the surface. So, double integral of this area element 1 plus z x square plus z y square d x d y. So, we see that in this case the optimization involves a functional of two independent variables x and y and we will deal with similar class of problems later on. Okay. So, then let, let us now move on to another problem in economics. Okay, so, this, this fifth one or the last problem of this lecture series is the problem of finding the optimal harvest, the optimal harvesting strategy. So, the problem is well this could be modified into a problem in several areas, but the classical problem arises in economics. So, the problem is to find is to find a harvesting a harvesting strategy a harvesting strategy let us say let us say of let us say of fishes in a pond. So, we have to find the harvesting strategy that maximizes that maximizes that maximizes profit. So, the fisherman has to harvest 
so much quantity of fish so that he or she can get the maximum profit out of it. So, let us say let us say that uh, the, the growth of the fish population the growth of the fish population follows a an ODE of the form y prime t which is equal to f of t comma y where where I denote my y to be. So, y to be my fish population at any given time at any given time point t. Okay. So, then let us further assume let us further assume that the fish cannot grow indefinitely which means that there is a carrying capacity of the fish there is a carrying capacity of the fish let us denote the carrying capacity by y c right. So, y c is the carrying capacity of the fish which means that I am going to I am going to model I am going to model the growth of the fish which is I am going to denote this left hand side sorry the right hand side of this ODE given here by the logistic curve. So, the growth could be modeled could be modeled using using the logistic curve. Okay. So, which means that my, my right hand side of my ODE will be of the following form it is k where k is a constant. So, this is a constant times y of t times 1 minus y of t divided by y of c. We see that when the population exceeds the carrying capacity y c the right hand side of this O d becomes negative right. Uh, well, we assume that the constant k is positive. So, which means that the after y c the fish population is going to start to fall. Okay. Further we assume that there is an initial condition that is the initial population of the fish at t equal to 0 is y 0 and let us further assume let us further assume that the harvesting rate the harvesting rate the rate at which the fish population is taken out of the pond is denoted by by this. Uh, function w of t right. So, which means that that this particular o d e can now be remodeled as follows we are we are going to remodel the growth of the fish population by this modified growth equation f of t comma y minus w of t which is the quantity per unit time of the fish which is taken out of the system. Okay. So, so then the problem is as follows the problem is the problem is we need to determine we need to determine the harvesting rate we need to determine w of t so that so that the profit is maximum the profit in a given period is maximum. So, typically the fishermen they want to take out fish in a particular season of the year. So, let us say this period is a particular season of the year where the fisherman wants to maximize the profit. Okay. Let us denote this period by t. So, then let us now quantify this problem let us say that c be the cost of harvesting. So, c is the cost to harvest harvest per per unit per unit biomass or biomass of the fish right so of course the cost will depend on the particular season it will depend on the fish population in the pond as well as the harvesting rate and then let us say that p of t is the price of the fish that we is sold on the in the market 
the price per unit mass of the fish which is sold in the market. Okay. So, which means that my profit functional my profit functional P of y comma w is the following functional integral from 0 to t the total price of the fish minus the cost to harvest that quantity of fish times the harvesting rate of the fish d t. Right? So, let me denote let me denote this by 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 5. So, we need to find the, the goal of this problem is we need to find w of t such that 5 is maximum such that 5 is maximum and subject to subject to the constraint subject to the constraint uh, subject to the constraint y prime is equal to f of t comma y minus w of t. So, we have that the fish population must satisfy this O d e constraint. We see that this co particular constraint now is not an integral constraint, it is a differential constraint and hence the so called holonomic constraint. Okay. So, we are going to deal with the class of uh, problems of extremizing function functionals with holonomic constraints later on. And of course, we we have boundary conditions, we have boundary conditions or I would say initial conditions in this case, which is given by the fact that y at t equal to 0 is y 0. Right? Now, we the one can always say that an intuition tells us that perhaps the profit of this functional 5 can be maximized when all the fish is taken out of the pond. Right? So, one intuition tells us that the boundary condition when over the entire length of the, the catching season, the total fish is taken out of the pond or y at t equal to 0 is perhaps the optimal solution. It turns out that this is not the case. This is not. So, so the boundary conditions this is not the optimal case because it turns out that as we harvest more and more fish from the pond, it becomes more and more expensive to harvest the fish. Right? So, because harvesting, harvesting is more costly, harvesting is more costly with, with fewer fish in the pond, with fewer fish in the pond. Okay. So, let me wrap up this lecture session by giving you some more problems that we are going to disclose and talk about more in more depth. So, the problems that we are going to talk about over the later lectures are the problems of reduction of vehicle drag also known as the class of pro, the class of problems related to the Newton's aerodynamic problem. So, the vehicle design with minimum drag, the class of this problem belongs to the Newton's aerodynamic problem. We will go through this in detail over another lecture. Another problem that I am interested to go in depth is to find the optimal shape of a soap bubble the optimal shape of a soap bubble with such that such that the curvature the curvature such that the curvature is minimum right it turns out that the lower the curvature of the soap bubble the lower is the total energy or the surface energy of the soap bubble so nature provides the shape of the soap bubble such that the total energy of this system is minimum. Right? Then another problem that we are going to talk in detail is finding, finding the shape of, of cantilevers or bending beam problems 
cantilevers or buckling beams cantilever or bu buckling beams in in atomic force let us say atomic force microscopy right well the class of this is one just just one case microscope so this is just one case of the class of problems that we are going to describe and this class of problems belong to the class known as elastica which we will also talk in more depth so so thank you very much so that's the end of this this session thank you for listening